slowly, most, not even old people, but a lot of old people. What is it? Arthritis, rheumatoid arthritis. Rheumatoid arthritis was terrible back in the 40s and 50s. Everybody, remember? And then it just went away. You know why it went away? Because a miracle drug came out. And I saw this movie in pharmacy school. It was from the AMA meeting, American Medical Association meeting, where they, the drug company was real proud of their new drug, and they had this lady come up the stage, and she was that rheumatoid, and she walked real slow like this. And then the next day, they showed the movie, and she's like, woo, do, 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 do. she's like bounding up the stairs. And like, everybody gives a standing ovation, and they think it's all exciting. And the drug was prednisone. And that's how... That, that was the golden age of pharmacy. That's when the golden age of pharmacy was born because they had this medicine premise on to shut down the immune system. So you shut down your immune system. Obviously, you're not going to have an immune reaction. If you shut down the immune system. But then they started to discover that people, when they got into accidents, they wouldn't recover so fast. Sometimes they would die when they got into an accident because their immune system was shut down. Do you suppose it's ever a good idea to shut down your immune system? Never. Ever. You want to figure out what's triggering the immune system. And by the way, Anytime the immune system is activated, it's only coming in from one of two places. Your respiratory system, you're breathing it, or you're eating it. Which one do you think is most of the time? Eating it. So if you have autoimmune disease, allergies, any kind of inflammation associated with, uh, uh, associated with uh, the immune system, activated the immune system, look for food allergies. And by the way, food allergies are an epidemic. They're an epidemic, food allergies. The big five, soy, grains, dairy, peanuts, and eggs. It's the big five. Soy, grain, dairy, peanuts, and eggs. The big five food allergies. All right, so in any case, this, back to our story about essential fatty acids, omega-3s, omega-6s, you need them both. Look for a supplement that has them both. Look for a supplement that has them both. I love the longevity EFAs. If you have dry skin, menstrual cramps, or fat cravings. Now, because your body is constantly using these fats to make hormones, you'll be deficient if you miss a day and you'll crave fats. If you're on fats, for like, you're taking them regularly, you're not craving fats, you miss a day or two days, you'll look at the pizza again, it'll look good to you. Because your body's constantly using these fats and it needs fats. Fats are where the sun is trapped, by the way. When you're eating a fat, you're eating sun energy. The sun shines on a plant and that plant turns that energy into either sugar or fat. That is the storage form of sunlight. So you're eating sunlight energy when you eat fat. And fat makes everything taste good because it makes it spread along your tongue for your taste, activates more taste buds. If you mix fat with spices, fat and spices are awesome, and then put it on, on foods, especially protein, because fat and protein goes together. When I mean, you mix fat and spices, the spices run along your tongue and activate more taste buds, and the food tastes more flavorful. Here's a little tip for you. Have you, know, you probably noticed that if you bake. You keep chocolate and fat go together real well, because all that chocolate act, uh, energy, the chocolate taste, spreads along your taste buds. That's why they use cocoa butter and chocolate. So fats make everything taste better. Mix them, mix them liberally, and fats and protein go together. They go together in the body. Speaking of fats, we talked about cholesterol. Please do not worry about your cholesterol. By the way, HDL is cholesterol, right? Yes, no? Yes. Louder. Come on, people. Yes. Okay? LDL is cholesterol, right? Yes. No, I fooled you. They're not. They have nothing to do with cholesterol, except for they carry cholesterol. HDL is high-density lipoprotein. Lipoprotein it is not cholesterol. HDL is a lipo, it's a fat molecule, and a protein molecule. It's a bubble that carries cholesterol. Carries it. That's all it is. It's not cholesterol. And it carries it to the liver, in which case they say, oh, that's good cholesterol. It carries it away from the liver, in which case they say, that's bad cholesterol. It's not good or bad. It's silliness. It's just going one direction or another. And when it's coming out of your liver, it's going to make things. One of the most important things it goes is into making cells. I want you to keep that in mind. One of the most important things cholesterol goes to do is to make cells. It will leave your liver to make cells. Your body will make more cholesterol when it's making cells. I want you to remember this because I'm going to come back to this. Your body will make more cholesterol. 80% of the cholesterol in your blood is made by your body. Not eating. That is silly. That's why I said go to a biochemist to understand your body, not a doctor. Food cholesterol is a small fraction of the cholesterol in your body. Your body is making cholesterol. It's probably the most important single chemical in your body. And one of the reasons it makes cholesterol is to make cells. So the more cells you're making, the more cholesterol you need. Second place it's used to make, uh, second uh, resultant end product of cholesterol is cortisol, which is your, your body's stress hormone. So the more stress you're under, the more uh, cholesterol your body's going to make. The more you're making cells and the more stress you're under. 
So keep, I want to keep that in mind because I'm going to get to it in a second. So if your cholesterol is elevated, it's not because you're eating cholesterol. If you're taking a drug to shut down your body's ability to make cholesterol, you're shutting down your body's ability to make cells, which it needs to do, and to make hormones, which it needs to do. It is silly, silly, silly medicine. And you can quote me on that one. That is silly, silly, silly medicine. Mevacor and Lipitor. The people who, tell, who make the recommendations, by the way, if you make the recommendations on how high your blood cholesterol should be, guess who they work for? They're paid speakers for Merck, Sharp, and Dome and the drug companies. They, those are the ones who tell, tell the doctors how much your cholesterol should be, and they tell, now they're telling you, they're telling the doctors how high your kid's cholesterol should be. That's the latest. That's the latest. Oh, your kid may, we may need to give him some Medicor. We may need to give him some Lipitor. Cholesterol's getting up there, okay? So anyway, that's it. Yes, go ahead. Cholesterol is involved in learning. So lowering cholesterol affects memory and affects learning. Mechanically lowering cholesterol. But I'm going to get to cholesterol here in a second. I just wanted to, I just wanted to start, put a little seed in there because I'm going to come back to it. So cholesterol levels will go up when you're making cells, and cholesterol levels go up when you're under stress. All right? So we'll get to that in a second. So that's fats. Make sure you're taking fats throughout the day. If you miss days, you're going to start craving them again. There's no real way to know how much fats to take. Let your cravings be a guide. Let your cravings be a guide. It's the best way to tell. And you shouldn't have dry skin. If you have cramps, you shouldn't have cramps either. That's the only way to tell because there's no real RDA. And there, fat science is really very basic. It's very rudimentary. We're not really advanced in terms of fat science. The best book on fats, by the way, the Bible of fats, is Fats That Heal, Fats That Kill by Dr. Udo Erasmus. Anybody read that book? It's, a, it's the Bible of facts. It's the Bible, and it comes out every couple years as a new edition, and it is an amazing, amazing book. Everybody should be reading that. All right, chapter three. Can I ask a question about yes. um, how, what's the best way to metabolize the EFAs? You EFA, was, if you're burping or if, yeah. you say it's less than and If you have a problem with fats, take your fats with fatty foods. And always mix vegetable, uh, fats with your vegetables. There's nutrients in vegetables that are fatty. Believe it or not, there's new, there's, in a cucumber or a celery, it doesn't look like it's very fatty, but there's nutrients in the cucumber and in the celery that are actually fatty. And those nutrients that are in the cucumber and celery that are fatty will come out if you put oil on your salad. Always use oil on your salad, always. Always use some kind of oil in your salad, and it's not a bad idea to have a very, very, very slight amount of heat. Very, very slight, because oils are unstable to heat. So very slight heat on there, because the nutrients that come out of the vegetables are, will be fatty and they'll come out. So to answer your question, do your EFAs with fatty foods? Because the fat metabolizing and fat digestive system, the chemistry will be already started, jump started, and it'll make it easier to absorb the, fatty, the essential fatty acids. So mix them together, put fats on top of vegetables. Put fats on top of everything. Fat, it makes food taste better, a hormone system kicks in, it shuts down your appetite, it's very satisfying. Even a, a teaspoon of fat, a good essential fatty acid oil will shut down your appetite, just in an emergency. And by the way, you can't get fat from essential fatty acids, your body will use them. So in case you're thinking, oh, the calories, your body will use them. Yes, sir? Does olive oil have any olive EFAs? Olive oil does not have essential fatty acids, but it's a good oil. It doesn't have EFAs, don't about, use it for your EFAs. How about flaxseed? Flaxseed's awesome, yeah. awesome. The best, they, probably the best. Seed oils in general, the flaxseed is tremendous. Yes. So when you're talking about using oil, you're talking about oil that has essential fatty acids. Yes. When I talk about oils on your vegetables, you know, if you use olive oil, it's not the end of the world, but you're not getting the EFAs. So you might as well use flax. You get the EFAs out of it. Or, and flax tastes really good, too. Flax oil has a real nutty flavor to it. Mix it with spices as well. All right. Chapter three, carbohydrates. Carbohydrates equals sugar, same word. But we want to start to readjust how we think about carbohydrates because we've been beating up on carbohydrates and I beat up on them a lot as well. There's a certain type of carbohydrate you want to stay away from. What carbohydrate, first of all, most of your calories should come from carbohydrates. What kind of carbohydrates should most of your calories come from? Complex. Not complex. Not complex because there is a type of complex fiber or carbohydrate that you don't want to necessarily have. So no. It is, happens to be complex, but it's more specific than that. What type of carbohydrate am I talking about that we should be getting most of our calories from? Say it louder. I heard somebody say it over here. No, I heard over here it was not fruits, and it was vegetables. Exactly. Vegetables, 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 like they're going out of style. Morning, you tonight, you can have a salad for breakfast. You know, you can have a salad for breakfast. I had to eat a salad for breakfast. He's like, oh, that's weird. You can have a salad for breakfast for lunch for dinner. In fact, you want about a pound of vegetables for every 50 pounds of body weight. 
That's two big fat, sounds like a lot, right? It's not. It's two big salads of whole foods. And if you do a Vitamix, it's even easier. That's one of the neat things about a Vitamix is you can drink it. You can just carry it with you, take it to work with you, or whatever. Keep it in the car, drink it out of a gallon jug if you want. And you'll get all your vegetables. And a V8 doesn't count, by the way. All right? That doesn't count. Oh, I should have had a V8. No. Listen, if it comes in a can, if it comes in a box, you probably don't want it, right? And if there's a little song that they sing, you know, or a cartoon character, you definitely don't want it, all right? And that's how it goes, because I'm, that sounds funny, but what I'm saying is if there's marketing associated with it, there's a dumb commercial, if there's no, there's no little Billy Broccoli cartoon where he's dancing around, you know, or, or cartoon or songs about radishes or onions, they're always about some kind of processed food. The money on those processed foods, oh my God. When you buy a box of processed food, the margin on that thing, the only thing with a higher margin is prescription drugs than the, the boxes with the flour and the cereal. You know how much food is in cereal? It's a great, I, I forgot the name of the book. It's a really cool book where a guy goes to work for a, he's a chemist and he goes to work for a cereal company and he talks about how they make cereal. And it, it's like air. And then the, and the flakes are all air. There's nothing in there. And they sell it for three bucks a box. There's more nutrition in the box. You should eat the box. At least you get some fiber if you chew the box. You know? There's nothing in the cereal. It's pure emptiness. It's pure emptiness, except for stuff that will make you big. It's, it's sugary. It's corn. And that's the real problem. Somebody said complex carbohydrates. Grains are a serious problem. We did not evolve to eat grains. Grains are a recent phenomena. By the way, wheat and corn, the main grains that we eat, they're not even, they weren't even edible 12,000 years ago. They had to be refined and genetically manipulated over generations, hundreds of years, to make them edible. They, corn wasn't edible. It was this little hard, nutty thing that you couldn't chew. Same with wheat, all the cereal grasses. And when we started to learn how to farm, that's when our culture starts to decline. Not our culture, our health. Our health starts to decline when we started to learn how to farm. And our caveman ancestors who were hunter-gatherers were big and strong. And then our little medieval people were like this. You ever see the little medieval houses? Because by that time, people were like four foot 11. They were dwarfs. No lie, I'm not kidding. There's little medieval doll houses, and they, people lived to be like 20. Life expectancy was like 20 back then. And our hunter-gatherer ancestors who ate protein, they actually had big, strong bones, and they were like five foot 11, and they lived long lives. Did you, anybody know that? They don't tell you that. When, when archaeologists date bones, they look at the bones and they look at how strong the bones are. And if the bones are little shriveled up, shriveled up bones, they go, grain eating culture. Big strong bones, they go, protein eating culture. Just like that. When we started to learn how to have, you know, farm grains, we got civilization, for better or worse. We got culture. You know what else we got? I don't want to get too political here, but that's when we got kings. Because kings decided, well, wait a minute. I could have some of that and I could keep it and then sell it back to you? Huh, good deal. Right? And that's when we started to get governments, and that's when we started to get religions, and that's when we started to get a whole hierarchical system in place once we started to farm. There's great books on it. Read Jerry Diamond. Anybody read Guns, Germs, and Steel? Great book that talks all about that, right? Talks all about it. What's that? Gun, it's, it's, it's not really nutrition, but it's, if you're interested in anthropology, it's a very fascinating read. Guns, Germs, and Steel by Jerry Diamond. He talks all about this, but a lot of people are talking about this now. In any case, grains are very problematic. They're especially problematic for the digestive system. And when you see that food pyramid that says eight to 12 servings of grains, whose interest do you think that's in? It ain't in yours. You know, and we think about farmers, it's not like farmer and the Dell farmers, it's big ConAgra farmers. You know, that's the farmers. We have this romanticized version of the family farm. Forget that. Those are like, these are big industrial farms. And so it's in the interest, by the way, these crops are so subsidized. You ever wonder why a hamburger costs a dollar now? 99 cents for a dollar for a hamburger? 95? How did that, how did that happen? But a head of broccoli, that's like $3, right? Yeah. What's up with that? Well, the cows are eating <coughs> corn that we're all paying for, that is all subsidized. You think cows like corn? They don't have a choice, you know, but they're not loving, loving the corn. They're not supposed to be eating corn. Yes? <coughs> food Inc. Great movie. Oh, yeah. Great movie. <coughs> See Food Inc. If you haven't seen it, thank you. That is a great movie. Great book, The Omnivore's Dilemma, and, there's, and Michael Pollan has several books that are great, by the way, and, and uh, uh, we were just talking about Michael Pollan earlier. Yes? Sunblock? Salt Park? Oh, Salt Block. I like Salt Park. Did you see South Park episode where Earth is an alien reality show? I thought that was very cool. I still think there might be something to that. Sometimes I think this is a big terrarium. <laughs> 
I'm not sure it's not. I'm not sure it's not. And they're getting a kick out of this. I know they are. All right. Did you? I'm sorry. Were you going to ask? Okay. So I'll talk about salt. Here we're talking about minerals. All right. Okay. We're just kind of kind of running out of time here. So uh, about carbohydrates, vegetables not only provide you with fiber, very important. But vegetables provide you with complex sugars that are very important for the immune system. Complex sugars that are critical for the immune system, for stimulating the immune system. So you want to go nuts on vegetables. They're a very cost-effective food in the sense that they don't take a lot to process, except for the cellulose takes somewhat, some work to process. But the nutrients don't take a lot to process. If you grind the vegetables and make juices, that makes it much easier. And you get a lot of bang for your buck. A lot of bang for your buck. Now, here's where vegetables really excel. This is very important. In this culture, for one reason or another, we have become heliophobic. What does that mean, heliophobic? We become terrified of the sun, right? Well, here's the graph on the sun. First of all, the sun's your friend. Love the sun. Now, don't you feel better when you're out in the sun, right? How do we let them bamboozle us into thinking the sun is some demon in the sky that wants to just destroy us? We all know that we feel better in the sun. The sun is powerfully healing, aside from vitamin D, which is incredibly important. It organizes energy. It's antiseptic and antibiotic. It stimulates growth. It's powerful, powerful stuff. You say, well, I don't want to get wrinkles. Well, here's the problem with the sun and wrinkles and aging and cancer and, and photo damage. What is out in the sun all day long and never gets skin cancer? Fish. Where's that? <laughs> I'm not sure where you're going exactly. It's like cat. <laughs> what is out in the sun? And it thrives in the sun. What? Animals? No. Fly, grow. Plants, right? So what's in the plant? Something is in the plants that allows them to thrive. Well, the pigments, the colors, the reds, the blues, the oranges, the greens, the yellows. The pigments in plants and the nutrients in plants are, are in the plant to protect the plant from the sun. But when you eat those pigments, when you eat those nutrients, they literally go through your digestive tract, they go into your blood, and they get stored in your skin. Literally. And they get secreted in your sweat to protect you. Nature is perfect always. You're designed to grow in the sun. We're that way. We grew up in Africa, for crying out loud. Of course we've evolved mechanisms to take care of the sun. But the problem is, number one, Nobody's eating their vegetables, okay? because we all said, I said earlier, what kind of carbohydrates, and people said fruits, right? And I see fruits and vegetables all the time, and that's sort of right, but what do you hear when you hear somebody says fruits and vegetables? You hear, fruits and vegetables, yeah. like that, because everybody's like, I can have my cherries, my watermelon, my bananas, no problem, fruits and vegetables, right? I've been there, I've got all my fruits and vegetables, honeydew and bananas and all that, right? But nobody thinks about Brussels, Brussels sprouts and radishes and... Those are the things that you really need. So I don't like the fruits and vegetables, by the way. Fruits are bred today to be super sweet, filled with sugar. In the old days, they were little berries. Old days, I mean, our hunter-gatherer ancestors, a million years ago or a couple hundred thousand years ago, they found a berry, a berry, whoa, cranberry is usually bitter too. And that's the kind of vegetables you're supposed to be eating, or fruits you're supposed to be eating, because, because, because the medicine is bitter. The medicine is bitter. Technically, in chemistry, we call them alkaloids. They're bitter. That's why people don't like their vegetables, really. Unless there's a lot of sugar in there, because the alkaloids are bitter. They have a bitter taste. Kids don't eat vegetables because they don't understand. They only want to go for the sweets. So these alkaloids, these little particles that we call, uh, that we call phytonutrients, are there in the plant to protect the plant from the sun, and by the way, from the bugs as well. And when you eat them, they get secreted in your sweat and stored in your skin especially the colors, by the way. So eat your reds, your greens, your oranges, your purples. And when you're eating a fruit, eat the peel. Eat, that's where the medicine is because the peel is where the plant is being protected from the sun. A vegetable doesn't have a peel, so its medicine is dispersed throughout the vegetable. But in a, a piece of fruit, it's the sugar's in the middle and the peel's on the outside. So if you're going to eat your peels, or eat your fruits, eat the peels. That's where the medicine is. Especially I hear, by the way, in grapes, although it's somewhat tragic what they're doing in grapes, the medicine is in the outside part of the grape, and that is some powerful medicine. The smaller, the higher the surface, uh, the skin to pulp ratio, the more medicine is in the fruit. So you want a greater amount of skin compared to the pulp. And smaller pieces of fruit have a higher skin to pulp ratio, and they tend to be the better ones. The berries, 
That's where you want to go, especially the ones with less sugar. So your fruits and vegetables contain these phytonutrients that protect you from the environment, protect you from the sun. But, but, this is the but. The but is those nutrients tend to be fat soluble. So if you have any fat problem, colon problem, celiac disease, subclinical celiac disease, gallbladder removed, anything that compromises your ability to absorb fats, you won't get your phytonutrients no matter how much vegetables you're eating. You guys get that? Okay, the phytonutrients that we're looking for, the powerful phytonutrients are fatty. That's why you want to put oil on top of them to pull out the fat. If you have a little bit of heat, that'll pull it out even further. But if you're compromised in fat absorption, if you had a hysterectomy, that'll compromise your fat absorption. Gallbladder removed, anything that compromises your fat absorption, you'll be more sensitive to the sun. You'll be more sensitive to the environment. You'll be exhibit the signs of photo aging, photo damage much more rapidly, which is why I hate to beat a dead horse, but I, it's, I have to say it over and over again. This is the core of health, the digestive system. The digestive tract is the core of your health. If that's not working correctly, nothing else will work correctly. That's where you should be focusing on when it comes to your health, your digestive system. Do this a little bit at a time. Try to fix everything all at once. Work on your digestive system. Make sure it's operating pristinely, cleanly. Colon cancer is the second leading cause of death by cancer. Have you ever seen anybody with colon cancer? It's awful. It's awful. You wish you were dead. It's the most awful way to go. It's the second leading cause by uh, cause of death by cancer and increasing. And digestive problems are increasing. So you want to be working on the core of that body. Your digestive system, your colon. You ever see those old spick and span commercials where it goes bing, bing, like that? That's what your colon should be. Bing, bing, just sparkling clean. Nothing in there. Some people have, had a, have two bowel movements a week. Okay? Some of you probably do because I hear it all the time. So I know there's some people in here that think it's okay to have two, they don't think it's okay, but they have two bowel movements a week. You want to be six to 12 hours dumping it out. That's all poison. Out. Out of your system. And I mean logs. I'm not kidding. No, I'm not kept telling us, hey, we're all adults here. That's how you want it. And we say, nutrition, we say, the bigger the stools, the smaller the hospitals. Okay? And colonics are great too, by the way. Yes? Raw food's all right, but the problem is there's certain nutrients that don't come out in raw food. So raw food's got lots of enzymes in it, but especially with vegetables, there's things that block the nutrients in vegetables that need to be heated a little bit. So 70, if you want to really do it right, 70, 30 raw to, to steam. And, and steam very little. Don't overcook. Don't overcook. Just very slightly steam because there's certain things that have to that require heat to, get, to come out. But raw food, as a rule, is the way you want to go, as raw as possible. Cooking is a big problem. Absolutely, cooking is a big problem. Okay. So... Uh, uh, what, by the way, for those pigments that we're talking about, there's a great product back here called uh, the Ultimate Youth. Do you bring Ultimate Youth back here, which is just pigments, especially a problem if you have, especially affected if you have a problem with digestion for the sun and for the environment. Look for pigments and the the, the uh, what's it called, Connie? The Ultimate Youth, right? Yeah. <laughs> the Ultimate Youth on I'll talk about that in a second. Look, look for pigment products. We have a great one called Ultimate Youth. Okay. Chapter four, fiber. I saw a commercial for fiber, uh, fiber one, where the candy bar commercial. Oh, it's a candy bar. No, it's fiber. It's really fiber. Oh, you're a magician. You ever see that commercial? Yeah. The guy's a magician, right? Oh, you're so much magical. You have a candy bar. It's fiber. You don't need to buy fiber in the store. It's silly. Do you know how cheap fiber is, by the way? Can you imagine how cheap fiber is? That's just nothing. It's fiber. <laughs> They sell it for ridiculous, uh, ridiculous money. If it's a candy bar, I don't care if it has a thousand grams of fiber. It's not good for you. Make your own fiber. Get a coffee grinder. Ten bucks, fifteen bucks. Get flax seeds, golden organic flax seeds. Put it in the coffee grinder. Press a little button. It makes the most delicious fiber you'll ever taste. It's got. If you use flax, it's got vitamins. It's got uh, protein. It's got essential fatty acids and awesome fiber. You want about four tablespoons of fiber a day. F uh, for women. We have a big problem in our culture with something called Zeno. Anybody know what the word Zeno means? <laughs> what is Zeno? No, not so. What does Zeno mean? Foreign. Foreign. We had a big problem with, with xenophobia. That's one problem we got. That's, but I'm not going to talk about that. Okay? That's, all, that's one problem. But we have xenoestrogens. Foreign estrogens. Birth control pills act like estrogen. Sunscreen ingredients act like estrogen. Plastics and ingredients in plastics act like estrogens called xenoestrogens, they mess up your hormone system. They're involved in prostate issues, they're involved in breast issues, they're involved in uh, 
female reproductive hormone issues. They're involved in little kids reaching puberty when they're eight years old. Have you noticed this? There are little frogs and fish that have female and male organs in the swimming around because they're swimming in estrogen. Infertility is increasing. Sperm counts are dropping. Estrogen dominance is increasing. We got a big problem with estrogen. Big. And fiber clears out estrogen. Fiber clears out estrogen. It's one of the most important uses for fiber. It empties your body of estrogen. It's also fuel for the little probiotics in your digestive tract, so it's great for healing the digestive tract if you have celiac or Crohn's. So uh, make your own fiber, don't waste your money. And if you do flax, you get all the, all the good stuff in flax, throw in almonds, throw in pumpkin seeds, throw in sunflower seeds. By the way, pumpkin seeds and sunflower seeds are great for the prostate. Okay, so that's fiber. Chapter uh, five is water. Water is, your body is a, an electrical system. And the electricity is conducted largely through the medium of water. There's 70% water. Now they tell you to jump out of the pool when lightning comes, it's because water conducts electricity. When you mix certain molecules with water, you get an electrical current, especially, min especially minerals. You get an electrical current. That's why when you're dehydrated, you don't feel so good. The chemistry in your body depends on a certain electrical energy, a milieu, an electrical environment. And that electrical environment is maintained and stabilized by water. That's why you want to be drinking water. To, so that the chemistry in your body works more efficiently. Half a gallon to a gallon a day, make sure it's clean. Now, I don't know how the tap water is here, but around the country, it is not good. It's not good. If, you want to, if you're a masochist and you want to torture yourself, go on the EPA's website, Environmental Protection Agency's website, and look up water. You'll see all the yummy stuff that's in your tap water. Giardia, E. coli, human fecal material. But don't worry, there's tr you're allowed to tr just trace amounts. Most human fecal material is cleared out. I'm not kidding you. It says it right on the EPA website. So you've got to be very careful with your water. I know I've heard the rap on distilled water, empty water. Okay, fine. Get your minerals and your nutrients somewhere else. Most of the water in your body, by the way, is distilled water. Rainwater is distilled water. So I'm not buying the stuff about distilled, but at least reverse osmosis are purified. Now, there is structured water out there. It's probably good, actually, structured water. We're learning a lot about water as an information conductor. Anybody ever seen uh, that guy Emoto's book on water? Where he, he actually puts, he has people think a certain thing and the water structures change by his thoughts. Oh, by the way, the stuff we're learning about mental, mental powers these days. Anybody seen any of these movies with the bleep? Or, or uh, there's another one, The Living Matrix. Where's Dave Allen, by the way? Dave. He just rolled up. Oh, where is, he just rolled up here? He just rolled out. Oh, okay. oh he just rolled out. Okay. Oh. Okay. Um, anyway, so The Living Matrix, great movie. There's a lot of really good movies where they're talking now about understanding mind over matter. How many of you think mind over matter is silly? You can tell me if you think it's silly. Raise your hand. Raise your hand. Oh, come on. I know somebody's not. It's silly. No? Okay. Well, good. Well, I'm glad, you, I'm glad that you understand that because mind over matter is everything. If you lift your hand, that's mind over matter. If you take a step, that's mind over matter. Mind over matter is everywhere. Mind is primal. It's the first thing that happens, and we're learning that today. Today we talked about information. Water carries information. Water carries information. Electrical information, and in the future we'll probably find out different kinds of information. Drink water, you'll have, get better information conductivity. Just drink lots of water. By the way, if you're tired or you don't feel so good, you will feel great when you drink water. Have you experienced this? You start to feel good when you drink water. For people with back pain, when the cartilage becomes dehydrated, it contracts. And so you feel more pain when it expands from, by drinking more water, you feel better. So for back pain, for energy in the morning, water is amazing. Drink more water, you'll eat less. And by the way, drink water with your meals. People say, oh, I don't drink water with your meals. Dilutes your digestive juices. Baloney. Your digestive juices are designed to work in water. Anybody hear this? Don't drink water with your meals. Dilute. Not true. Your digestive juices have to, have to expand with water so they can cover the food. It's designed to work that way. Anyway, drink more water, half a gallon to a gallon per day. Try to keep it as clean as possible. Be very careful with tap water. Chlorine, by the way, and fluoride, those are big problems. I know there's a whole fluoride thing going on here. Chlorine and fluoride are two, are two of the most powerful pro-aging compounds we know about. Oxidated, oxidating compounds. So if you're going to do fluoride and chlorine in tap water or in showers, that's a great place to get uh, fluoride and chlorine, make sure you're using your antioxidants. Antioxidants will protect you. And I wish I had time to talk about oxidation, but I am coming back, by the way. So if you didn't catch stuff today, I'll be back in a couple of months and you can bring your friends and we can talk about more of this stuff. I hope to make this a regular, a regular deal. All right, running out of time. Um, uh, so chapter uh, 
Six vitamins, two kinds of vitamins. You have your you have your fatty vitamins and you have your watery vitamins. In nature, things are divided as fat soluble or as water soluble. And with vitamins, you have two kinds. Your water soluble vitamins are the B complex and vitamin C. Because they're water soluble, you need to be replacing them because you urinate them out and you want to take them with water. That's why I drink this stuff. If you're going to take the pills, at least wash it down with a lot of water, but this is perfect. This is uh, vitamin uh, B complex water and pollen burst and uh, the Beyond Tank Tangerine. I think it, what did you put in here? Did you put Beyond Tank? Fill us name. But I think that's what it is. Pollen burst and uh, some of the energetic you know, products. That's the way you want to drink your water soluble nutrients. The B complex is important for energy. Inside a cell, inside a cell, you have inside a cell you have these tiny little organelles substructures. You have thousands of them, tens of thousands in some cells. And these tiny little substructures produce energy. Anybody know what they're called, by the way? Say it louder. Mitochondria. mitochondria. They produce energy. One of the really cool things about mitochondria is they have a completely different DNA than you do. They're little independent creatures that somehow merge with you to allow you to live. How cool is that? They're independent beings. They don't even know you exist. They have their own reproductive system. They divide. CSI, mitochondrial DNA, they have their own DNA. So these mitochondria are where energy is produced, but the way energy is produced is in the absolutely most phenomenal, mind-blowing biochemistry that you could ever imagine. I'm not gonna go into it, but it, what ends up happening, long story short, is B vitamins get turned into energy. The B vitamins get turned into energy through a process called electron transport. If you're a biochemist, don't hold my feet to the fire because I understand what's happening, but I'm, being, I'm trying to be sim simple here. I don't wanna be too complicated. So the B vitamins get turned into energy via a process called electron transport. The, the, the tissue of the body, the cells of the body, the parts of the body that use energy the most depend on the B vitamins the most. Those are the heart, the digestive tract, the central nervous system, the brain, and the skin. The skin and the digestive tract, by the way, are like two peas in the pod, the same cell types. And the brain and the heart, they're specifically dependent on the B vitamins. For the heart, if you have any heart disease, or you're concerned about any heart disease, they are the cheapest, most effective, simplest way to protect yourself from heart disease, the B vitamins. They're so, especially B6, folic acid, and B12. You, we hear all about cholesterol and heart disease. That's a bunch of hooey, but I'll tell you what may be involved in heart disease, and what's certainly somewhat involved in heart disease, if not the, if not the cause of it, it's certainly involved, is a chemical, a toxic chemical called, anybody know? Homocysteine. Homocysteine. What's that? Homocysteine. Greetings. Homocysteine. Good to see you, David. Thank you. What's that? Oh, because of the homocysteines, yes. Thank you, David. Good job. Appreciate it. <laughs> David, Dave, I'll do the jokes. Okay. Okay. We got it covered. All right, no, that's good. Homocysteine. Homocysteine is really the culprit. And guess what's cool about homocysteine? All you need is about a penny's worth of B vitamins a day to completely eliminate it. Kilner McCulley was a professor at Harvard who discovered this. Did he win the Nobel Prize? No. He got fired. <laughs> That's what happened to him. <laughs> How dare you say that? You know? So, homocysteine. Homocysteine is a byproduct of protein metabolism, especially meat protein. It's a byproduct of protein metabolism. And that's why the B vitamins are important, because the B vitamins are involved in protein metabolism, especially vitamin B6. Um, hang on, I'll get you in a second. So the B vitamins are your energy vitamins. And vitamin C, that is the big kahuna. That is the great grand poobah of all vitamins. I mean, that is just the most stunningly amazing, for such a simple molecule, from a biochemical standpoint, it is a tiny little simple molecule, but it is involved in so many factors in health. It's so important for the, for the uh, animal organism that most animals make their own vitamin C. Most animals make vitamin C. Human beings, nobody really knows why, Human beings and certain gorillas and, and some guinea pig types have lost the ability to make vitamin C. We don't know why it's one of the great mysteries of archaeology or anthropology or of evolutionary biology, whatever you want to call it. The point is, is that vitamin C is so fundamental, it's actually made by most, by most animals. We can't make it. Vitamin C is involved in a lot of things. I'm not going to tell you absolutely everything, but some of the most important things are in the production of collagen. Collagen is a protein that's not only important for your bones, vitamin C is way more important for your bones than calcium. I'll say that again. Vitamin C is way more important for your bones than calcium. I shouldn't say it. Supplementation of vitamin C is way more important for your bones than supplementation with calcium. 
So that makes that distinction. Calcium is important for your bones, but supplementing with vitamin C is more important than supplementing with calcium because you're constantly losing your vitamin C as you urinate. If you're not getting it in in supplemental fashion, chances are you're not getting enough, and the RDA is pathetic. What does the RDA stand for, by the way? No, the ridiculous deprivation allowance. That's what it stands for because it's designed to keep you ridiculously deprived. So don't pay any attention to the silliness around RDAs. Silliness. There's some exceptions to that. Some of the minerals, like selenium and iodine, some of those are a little bit tricky. But for the most part, the RDAs are way low. You need a lot of vitamin C. All right, vitamin C for collagen. But collagen is not just involved in bone health. Collagen is involved in skin health. But it's really, what really is important for, for survival is in your vasculature. Your blood vessels depend on collagen for their integrity. Weaknesses in the vasculature lead to strokes and aneurysms and heart disease. And I didn't, you know, I meant to talk about, I'll have to get back to that. How are you guys doing, by the way? Good. Right. Yes? Great. Okay, are we okay with you yes. not yep. overload or anything? No. Okay. A year ago. What's that? You've got a whole year. Just keep talking. No, I can't keep talking, but I'm, I'm going to wind it down here. But there was one really important thing I forgot to talk about. Um, all right, so uh, vitamin C. Uh, take it in water and make sure you're getting... Just don't even worry about the dose. You're not going to overdose it. You can take 10 grams of this stuff a day. You're not going to overdose on it. You can get an IV. You can put it right into your vasculature, right into your blood. All right, so uh, the fat-soluble vitamins, remember the acronym DEAK. D-E-A-K. DEAK. Vitamin D, obviously we get it from the sun, but vitamin D deficiency is a big problem. And today we're learning more and more about vitamin D. Every week there's something new about vitamin D. But for the most there's a lot of reasons why vitamin D is important, but the one, the one reason I want to hit home, hit hard, is something that we've started to understand, we only started to understand the last couple of years, and that is the importance of vitamin D for the immune system. For the immune system. It boosts your immune system, which means it fights cancer, which means the sun protects you from cancer. The sun protects you from, how ironic is that? The sun protects you from skin cancer. Oh, but I don't want melanoma. Most melanoma happens inside your body, not on the outside of your body. Nobody has yet linked the sun to melanoma. Nobody has yet linked the sun to melanoma. I'm not saying the sun's not involved, but it has no definitive link between the two. We know people get melanoma inside their bodies. We know you get melanoma in areas where you have to wear clothes. So the link is far from definitive between melanoma and the sun. I don't know which way it goes, but I would guess that it has more to do with our crappy nutrition than it has to do with the sun. Anyway, so vitamin D is important for a lot of things, but I want to focus, I want you guys to understand that it's important for the immune system. By the way, you notice people don't get sick when they're out in the sun? We get sick in the wintertime when we're not out in the sun. So vitamin E is important to protect you from the sun. It protects all the fats in your body. Now you know about taking essential fatty acids, make sure you take them with vitamin E. Because vitamin E will protect the fats. All the cell membranes are mostly fat. So they'll protect your cell membranes. Your brain is mostly fat. Everybody in this room is a fat head. Because your brain is 60% fat, and vitamin E will protect the fat in your brain. Do you know one of the ways, one of the ways we die is our brains turn rancid. They turn rancid. How do you like that? Because the fat in your brain. Well, not only bad fats, the fats aren't protected if you're not taking antioxidants that protect the fats. And so our brains turn rancid. I mean, that's a pretty graphic way to talk about it, but that's what's happening. The fats go bad. They oxidize. Oxidation of fats is rancidity. Vitamin A is probably the single most important vitamin you could ever take for your skin. And it's so unfortunate because if you haven't heard it yet, it's been in the news, at least in, in uh, the news of chemistry, that vitamin A on the skin is related to phototoxicity, blah, blah, blah. I'm not buying it. Because vitamin A is already in your skin. Everybody's got vitamin A in their skin, where it protects you from the lights. From the lights, literally. You're protected from light, from the sun, from the environment. For women, vitamin A can actually travel into a nucleus to turn on protein production. It goes into the nucleus of a cell that's called a fibroblast, which makes collagen. Turns on collagen production so effectively, it's actually a prescription drug called? Called? Retin A, yes. So vitamin A is very important for the skin, it's important for the immune system, it's important for bone health. Vitamin K is also important for bone health. In fact, we always talk about vitamin K for clotting, but vitamin K is really important for keeping calcium in the bones, like a magnet. One of the ways we die is we calcify to death. We turn to stone. Our brains turn to stone and our hearts turn to stone. We calcify. Vitamin K keeps that from happening. 
It acts like a calcium bag, you green leafies for vitamin K, you can supplement with vitamin K. Nobody's doing it, they should be. And then uh, that's D, D-E-A-K, minerals. There's a lot of minerals, there's 92. I'm not gonna talk about all 92 <laughs> minerals, but I will talk about a couple of my favorite minerals. There are, uh, there's a mineral that's found in uh, beer, actually. Great mineral found in beer. In fact, beer is really good food. Beer's got some good stuff in it. I don't drink beer personally. I don't like the taste of beer. But there's, how many of you are beer drinkers, beer brewers, anything like that? Okay? Beer has got some good stuff in it. Especially beer. Beer, by the way, has great stuff for skin, hair, and nails. It's got silica for skin, hair, and nails. It's got B vitamins for skin, hair, and nails. The silica's a great mineral. You ever notice those guys drinking the paper, beer out of the paper bags? They've got great hair. There's never bald. They got hair all over the place, right? It's because the beer is filled with all this stuff that's great for their hair. They used to use, remember beer shampoo? Do you guys remember they used to use beer shampoo, right? It's the same idea. Silica is in beer. Silica is in nuts. Silica is one of the best things you can take for skin, hair, and nails. One of the best things you can take if you're recovering from surgery as well. Um, zinc. Zinc is a superstar powerhouse mineral. Do you know that polydent, polydent or polygrip is being sued now by the uh, there's a class action lawsuit against Glaxo because their polygrip, I don't remember if it's polygrip or polydent, one of the, one of the uh, denture adhesives has zinc in it. And so people were using the polygrip and they were getting zinc. And when you take zinc, if you don't take copper with your zinc, you can go into copper deficiency. Because zinc and copper are balanced. So all these people are going into copper deficiency. They're suing Glaxo. Anybody hear this? Okay. And so Glaxo now reformulating their polygrip. But that's the power of this stuff. So zinc and copper always have to go together. There are 200 different chemical reactions that are dependent on zinc in the body, and almost everybody's deficient in zinc unless they are supplementing. Zinc is involved in the reproductive system, male and female reproductive system. It's involved in making protein at the genetic level. It's involved in bone health. It's involved in the immune system. It's involved in digestive health. It's, uh, zinc is stored in your skin when you cut yourself. Zinc actually migrates to the area to help close the cut, and almost everybody's deficient in zinc. So you want to make sure you're supplementing with zinc, and there are 300 different chemical reactions that depend on magnesium, and almost everybody's dependent on uh, deficient in magnesium. So you got to, if you're missing those two minerals, you're now deficient in 500 different chemical reactions in your body. They're just two minerals, right? And everybody's deficient in these unless they're supplementing. By the way, green, uh, min, uh, magnesium is green. Whenever you see green, that's magnesium, whether it's in a shirt or whether it's paint. Wherever it is, any green vegetables, that's the best place to get your magnesium. Women lose magnesium in the blood when they're having their period. Magnesium deficiency will cause problems with muscles. It'll cause problems with jitteriness. Magnesium is great to take before bed, by the way, because it helps you sleep. It's a relaxer. It's great for uh, if you're constipated. Taking high doses of magnesium. By the way, vitamin C is a great laxative, too. Um, there's, there's all, oh, for, for women, iodine is protective against breast cancer. Iodine, now you guys are having a problem with iodine here, I know, in, in terms of pesticides. It's the wrong kind of iodine. Good iodine will protect you from the bad iodine. So supplemental iodine is a great strategy to protect you from toxic iodine. Iodine is stored in your breasts. In fact, the breasts are the, the first or the second largest amount of iodine in the body. But in any case, they're protective against female, iodine is protective against female cancers. The iodine, of course, is found in seafood, but now we got a problem with the seafood, right? And I don't know what the heck we're going to do about the Gulf. Oh my God, that one is going to, there are ramifications there that are mind blowing, but that's a whole nother story. All right, and I'm, I'm sorry to do this in terms of speed. You guys have been great, by the way, just hanging out and listening to all this stuff. You doing all right? Is everybody doing okay? Yeah. All right, good. All right, so we're going to, let me just throw a few more things at you here. As far as accessory nutrients, one of my favorite accessory nutrients is something called NAC, N acetylcysteine. It's like, Met, it's, uh, it's so powerful for detoxifying your liver that you'll get it in your, it'll get put right into your blood if you have liver toxicity from Tylenol poisoning in the emergency room. It's powerful liver medicine, and it's also powerful lung medicine, N-acetylcysteine. It's used to make something called glutathione in the body, which is your body's primary cancer fighter, and it helps chelate. Chelation is a magnetic attraction, and NAC helps chelate heavy metals. Iodine for your methyl iodide, methyl bromide, and all the stuff that you're using out here. It helps chelate metals. Also, by the way, seaweed products and kelp chelate attract heavy metals as well. Um, probiotics, FluorFX, if you're using them, the longevity products, uh, they're also the nightly essence. 
good bacteria. You have five, you have 100 trillion cells, but you got 500 trillion bacteria in your colon, where they process nutrients, process foods, detoxify your body, help with all digestive problems from heartburn to diarrhea, everything, any digestive problem, everybody should take them. Just take them. Don't even ask any questions, especially for kids, by the way, especially for colicky kids, especially because uh, the good bacteria are supposed to be implanted from breast milk. So the kid isn't being breastfed, they're going to have a problem with their good bacteria, and they'll have the rest of their lives, by the way. So, because at, uh, you're supposed to get implanted with a base, a, a certain base of good bacteria through breast milk. So if you haven't been breastfed, the rest of your life, you're going to have issues around your digestive tract because of that. So probiotics, good bacteria, they make vitamins, they detoxify substances, everybody should take them. Don't worry about having a digestive problem, but if you have a digestive problem, you should absolutely take them. So those are the eight chapters of good nutrition, but I forgot to tell you one thing that's extremely important. Today, we suffer from, four of the main things that we suffer from are, are obesity, problems with blood fats and cholesterol, hypertension and cardiovascular disease and cancer. They all have one thing in common. And if you have to do one thing, if you can only do one thing to take care of your health, we talked about the digestive tract and how important that is. But if you can only do one thing to focus on, one, if there's one biochemical strategy you want to employ, say you're just overwhelmed by all the stuff, this is the one thing you want to focus on. And it's the key to longevity physically and the key to health as well. You want to understand your blood sugar system. Today we have a problem because we're eating so much sugar. The average American eats 150 to 200 pounds. If you include honey, it's about 200 pounds of sugar a year, if you include uh, non-sugar sweeteners like uh, high fructose corn syrup and honey, 200 pounds a year. That's crazy amounts, right? At any given moment, you have one teaspoon of sugar in your blood. If you're healthy, one teaspoon. If you put more in there, it's an explosive situation. Sugar explodes. It's like a fire in there. You need a small amount to fuel things, but a lot of it is a fire. Your body's evolved a very complex mechanism for putting that fire out, okay? It's a very complex mechanism. You know what it's called? It's called our fat butts. That's what that <laughs> complex mechanism is. And that's what your fat and our fat is. Our fat is the way sugar is, in, is sequestered. It's protecting, the, the body's protecting itself by storing, storing it as fat. Fat is stored sugar because sugar's very explosive and it's very dangerous. So your body has a mechanism for shunting that sugar into the fat. It's a hormone that's responsible for aging. It's your aging hormone. What is that hormone called? Insulin. insulin. And we all know about insulin. We all talk about insulin as a sugar hormone, but let me tell you something. Insulin as a sugar hormone, the, the role that insulin plays in taking sugar out of the blood is one of its tiny little side roles. Its main role is to be a growth hormone. It's a growth hormone. It makes things grow. It makes cells divide. So when you're eating lots of sugar, insulin comes out your pancreas. Little dribbles at first come out and pull the sugar out of your blood and then store it. And now you feel tired because your sugar's out of your blood. You need the sugar. So you go get some more sugar. So insulin comes out this time a little bit more. And then the sugar gets pulled out of your blood and you get tired. So you get some more sugar. And then insulin comes out, except this time a little bit more. And it keeps happening over the course of days and months and years until finally, at the end of 40 years of this, sugar is, uh, insulin is gushing out. It's gushing out. Now, because insulin, is, the role of insulin is just to take, get rid of sugar, it's just one of the side roles. Now you've got a, a whole ton, a, a wave, a tsunami of insulin. And insulin's got other things it's doing. Insulin is a cell, grow, a cell growth stimulant. So now cells are dividing really rapidly because your insulin's higher. So what does this mean? Well, cells dividing rapidly require cholesterol. So when cells are dividing rapidly because of all this insulin, you're going to start to make more cholesterol. Remember I said, cholesterol is used to make cells. So you're going to make more cholesterol when your body's making more cells, and your cholesterol will go up when your insulin goes up. Because all that sugar is being stored as fat, you will start to gain weight when your insulin goes up. So now you've got problems with cholesterol, and you've got problems with weight. Because cells are dividing really rapidly, now you have higher rates of cancer because the cells are dividing really rapidly. You've upped your rates of cancer. And then because cells are dividing really rapidly inside your, your vasculature, now the blood can't get through as well, and so your blood pressure goes up when your insulin goes up. If your blood pressure goes up over time, your heart starts to give up, so your rates of heart disease go up when your insulin goes up. And after a while, your insulin goes up, and your body stops listening to insulin. What do we call that? Diabetes. 
All right, so what are all the things we suffer from in this country today? Obesity, elevated blood cholesterol, cancer, heart disease, hypertension. Do you see a link here anywhere, people? It's insulin. That is the key to longevity and health is to control and stabilize your blood sugar and insulin. The key right there. And how do you do it? How do you lower your insulin? It's the easiest thing in the world to do. The easiest. If you have any of those issues, obesity, cholesterol, hypertension, heart disease, diabetes, any of those, insulin resistance, this is called, by the way, and you can begin to tell you have insulin resistance if you start to gain weight when you never gained weight before. You know when you're about 35 or 40, all of a sudden you get that little pooch? That's insulin resistance. Your body stops listening to insulin, and lowering it is the easiest thing you could do and the healthiest thing you can do. First of all, stop eating the pasta. Stop eating the bread and the potatoes and the corn and all the things that spike your insulin, the fruits. They say, well, I can't do that. I love pasta, I love bread, right? I'm sure some of you are thinking that, right? I don't believe in willpower. You don't eat willpower. How do you reduce your urges for sugar? Up your protein. Up your protein and up your fats. Up your protein and up your fats. Do not resist your urges. Guide them. Like Tai Chi, like martial arts. You know? Don't fight. I don't believe in fighting. Resistance is futile. Don't fight. Guide them. Direct them. Craving sugar, craving potatoes, go get some hardcore protein. Go get some scoops of protein, get some eggs, whatever your favorite protein is. It's the easiest way to lower your blood sugar and lower your insulin. By the way, don't have your blood sugars checked. That's not going to help. People say, I had my blood sugar checked. It's normal. The doctor says normal. Because your insulin's off, and that's making your blood sugar normal. The insulin's the problem. You have to have your insulin checked, and doctors hate checking insulin. You've got to insist on it. Insist on having your insulin levels checked, and if you're fasting blood insulin, if it's high, stop eating the pasta and the carbohydrates, the thing that spike the insulin. Secondly, there are nutrients you can take to potentize insulin, to make it stronger, especially the B vitamins, zinc, magnesium, and chromium and vanadium. Chrom and they're not found in many foods. I love the sweeties. It's one of my favorite of the Longevity Prize. You don't have to have it's marketed for diabetics. You don't have to be a diabetic to benefit from it. After meals, do your sweeties to lower your blood fats. All right, guys. You know what? You have been so awesome. Let me just say one thing before we wind down. If you enjoyed this, tell your friends. Tell everybody. When you start to see the results, tell everybody. I can't encourage you to be on these products more. You will not believe what happens to you if you have any kind of health issue. If you're interested in being involved in the business, there will be people who will talk to you about it later. I need people to help me. I don't need a lot, I need four or five people who want to help me spread the word. Who want to sp help me spread the word. This is not only my personal mission, it's my professional mission, it's my spiritual mission. I've seen this work so many times I can't tell you. The joy that you will feel, the power that you will feel when you start to control your biochemistry is indescribable. When you start to see things disappear on your body, and when you start to see things disappear on your loved one's bodies, their eczema disappear, then lose weight, and I see people lose 30, 50, 60 pounds once they start to incorporate these strategies. When you start to see arthritis disappear, when you just start to feel better, when you have a zest, a spring in your step, the way you're supposed to be, the feeling you'll get and the desire you'll have to share it with people because it's no fun being healthy by yourself. You want everybody to be healthy when you are. You want everybody to know about this stuff. I, it's, it's indescribable. I can't put it into words. You guys have been awesome. Thank you so much. I will be back. Was, was I right or was I right? I'll be back with a couple of